How many lovers have you made today? Chapter 14, Part 2 Celestia's smile fades some as Anon leaves. She always thought that she knew Anon to a certain level, but everything he just said, it... It gives her a glimpse into how much he's fighting to make this relationship work. She'll now move forward with that in her heart. It will take time, but perhaps one day he will be able to express himself without anything holding him back. That smile now returns in full force. That is a day she will cherish when it comes. With a kick in her morning, Celestia turns to the others at the table. We have much to do before the festival. Let's eat and discuss what's on the agenda. Everyone at the table gives a nod as a waiter comes to take their order. Anon hits Celestia's bed faster than he expected. That was too much. And now he can hear thoughts of regret for being so open in front of so many ponies. Why did he say all that stuff? It would have been better to talk to Celestia alone at the very least. But that feeling from before, it overpowered any logical thoughts he was having. It doesn't matter now. He's exhausted, and with a festival only a few hours away, that's all the time he has to rest. Closing his eyes, he hopes that, that is the most memorable thing to happen to him today. A stream of warm water washes over Pinky as she stands in her tub. Today's the festival, and there's no way she's going to miss out on the fun. Though she is a little antsy, as it's been some time since she's seen Anon in Twilight. She hopes those two are doing well. A sad sigh leaves her, she turns off the water and hops out. Things haven't been easy here in Ponyville. Sure, all the ponies are happy to see Pinky out and about again, but she's been trying to help with Rarity. AJ gave some insight into how long Rarity has been like that, she even tried to help her too, but it fell on deaf ears. Pinky has been met with the same reaction. Rarity doesn't react or take notice of anything that has to do with what happened when they were punished for Nan. It's like she's a doll now. But even Pinky knows that's a facade. She didn't tell anyone, but she got a brief glimpse into Rarity's workroom, and everything in there was torn apart. Pinky is at a loss for what she can do for her friend. She's tried so many things, and all of them were rushed off. Rarity is in her own world, and refuses to leave her home for any reason. Pinky grabs a towel and starts drying off. The one hurt the most by this is Sweetie Belle. She doesn't understand why her sister is acting the way she is. She's the one maintaining the house, and even has the help of her friends when she needs to make food. Since learning this, Pinky has extended a hoof to her, if only to ease some of her pain. Seeing that smile of hers as she comes over to learn how to cook, it's nice. But it's also in vain when Pinky has to see that gloom wash over her when it's time to leave. What can anyone do to help? She spent countless nights thinking of a solution, but there's only one thing that comes to mind. Anon would have to say something to snap her already out of it. It hurts her that she has ulterior motives for going to this festival. She wants to simply enjoy being with him, see how things are going, and have a great time together. However, she can't hide what's happening. This problem here, it's... It's not just about Rarity anymore, it's about her sister too. A knock rouses Pinky from her thoughts. She looks at herself in the mirror, and shakes her head a few times until her mane puffs out. Come in, I'm just getting ready. The sound of her door opens, and a few sets of hooves enter. Hey, you close to done? We only have a few minutes till the train's here. AJ calls out. Yep. Pinky answers, walking out of the bathroom. All done. How about you? Pinky looks over to see AJ, the Crusaders, and Fluttershy. Fluttershy and AJ smile at the Crusaders' evident excitement. I've never been to a festival before, Scootaloo says. None of us have. Applebloom comes in. Think there'll be lots of ponies there? I wonder what kind of sweets they'll have. Sweetie Belle smiles. All right, calm down, E3. AJ speaks with an authoritative tone. We've got a long trip ahead of us, and you can do your talking on the train. That's right, girls. Fluttershy speaks. I know you're excited, but we need to go before the train leaves. You heard him. Pinky turns up the cheer. Let's set sail. Or rails, specifically. Scootaloo groans at the joke, but it certainly keeps the mood high as the six leave Pinky's home and head to the train station. 
Pinky's glad that she was able to talk to most of her friends into coming. This should brighten their moods, but obviously Rarity had chosen to stay behind. Just as Pinky is about to feel her smile slip, a wing rests on her withers. Fluttershy is smiling at Pinky, just before removing her wing. Pinky nods a few times. Today is about fun. She'll worry about the other stuff later. Nightmare hasn't found any rest since Anon left. Echoes of the past and thoughts of the future have turned her mind into a battlefield. His actions, his words, all of it bringing a haze to her resolve and crumbling the plans she'd made with each passing second. How did it come to this? Thinking back before he entered her mind, all she did was slumber in this endless void. No thoughts of her future, content with the fact that she would be forever locked away in this prison. She never expected to see anything other than Luna enter her dream. She was surprised to see him, as all she ever knew of him was Luna's constant thoughts about him. It's strange how vividly she recalls their first meeting. That look of anger on his face when he realized Nightmare was real. It was... refreshing. Where once all Nightmare did was rest, now she found her thoughts plotting a means to escape and get a revenge. Her existence gained a purpose, a reason to live. Then that moment came when Anon saw what that horse did to her. And rather than turn a blind eye, he treated Nightmare with kindness. The look he gave her back then is still burned into her mind. A glimpse of not pity, but genuine worry. At the time, she didn't understand why, and when she thought he'd soon forget about her, he kept coming back to visit. During that time, she only thought of him as an annoyance, or a puppet to be used for escaping. That all changed when she entered his nightmare. To experience his emotions first hoof, it brought clarity to why he does what he does. It was a simple answer. He's kind to those that have done him no wrong. Nightmare has only known the despair of others, and yet Anon doesn't show that when he looks at her. She thought she buried these feelings a long time ago, but thinking of him brings a twinge to her heart. As much as she wants to push him away, to hate him, it's becoming difficult. Those words he said to her, they were haunting in their own way, as they were all too familiar. They walk a similar path, and in turn think alike in more ways than one. Nightmare looks into the abyss with comfort, because that's all she's ever known, and he is no different. It's from this darkness that time passes with ease, and all feelings drift away. Nightmare now finds her mind starting to drift. What would she gain from revenge? Night eternal? A throne to sit upon? Or honestly nothing at all? Only the brief satisfaction that she won, and then a lifetime of nothingness. She scoffs, as if that matters to her anyway. She lost the chance to escape when she helped Anon. She rolls onto her side as a long and tired sigh leaves her. Why is it that the more he comes around, the more these thoughts permeate her mind? She deemed nothing of the future. But now? She can't help herself. She lifts the same hoof that she used to touch his door. There's no pain anymore, but she can still feel the bite of his emotions as they flood into her. Such a stupid man, worrying about others over himself. She knows he would sooner die than ask for help, but wouldn't think twice to give his life for those he cares about. Her gaze drifts to where he bandaged her foreleg. She also felt the hate inside of him, far more poisonous than her own, and enough to show her that he can't compare to the creatures that reside here. A walking contradiction, and yet one she can fully understand. She groans as her foreleg falls limply to the floor. This is nothing but a waste of her energy. So what if he wishes to get to know her? What does that mean in the grand scheme? That she wouldn't have to be alone anymore? That sharp pain hits her again. So, that weakness still exists? Nightmare rolls onto her back, looking up to the void she's always known. She must clear her mind of this. Lifting her hoof, she drags it across the inky blackness, stars filling the sky and giving a dull glow to her once pitch-black world. With skill and grace, it doesn't take her long to recreate the night sky. Without notice, a small smile crosses her lips. It's been so long since she last saw the night sky with her own eyes. Even looking to her recreation brings warmth to her side. Nightmare's brows furrow in confusion. 
a warmth spreading to her side. She looks down and finds Anon holding onto her. His head rested against her barrel. With speed faster than expected, she bolts away from him. Her eyes locked onto him the entire time as redness creeps along her muzzle while her heart rapidly drums in her ears. It takes a moment for her to calm herself, but when she does, she analyzes the situation. Picking herself up, she walks over to get a closer look. Strange, this isn't a creation of her mind, as she initially thought. This is actually an on in her world. The question is, how did he get here? She tries to extend her senses out into the void, but finds that Luna has broken their connection. This is disturbing in many ways, because by all rights, he shouldn't be here. This reminds her of when his door entered her world while he was under great stress. Curious, she continues to investigate. She kneels low and rests her horn against his head. It takes a moment, but she gets the sense that he's emotionally drained and has fallen asleep. Though, that doesn't answer why he's in her world and not his own. She tries to reach out once again and finds that she does have a single connection. It's to his world. She's never experienced anything like this before, and it leaves her to question what it means. As she continues to look at him, she has a stray thought enter her mind. What if she let him rest without interruption? A betraying idea that fills her with wrath. This is her world, and he has no right to be here. She lifts her hoof to stomp on him, but stops again as she notices the worried look on his face. Is he having another nightmare? She kneels beside him, about to check, but is surprised when he wraps his arms around her. Don't go, he says in a far-off tone. I'm sorry. Nightmare leans back to see if Anon is still unconscious. He's talking in his sleep, but his expression is locked in a perpetual state of fear. There's that pain again. Why can't she leave him be? Is it because he reminds her of the past, or is it something else? He's so weak, and despite his suffering, that horse Luna can't even sense his cries in the void. He's all alone here, with no one but her. Once again, she falls prey to an emotion that she thought she lost a long time ago. Why would I leave? Nightmare whispers in Celestia's voice. I just think it's the right thing. He mumbles. I know that. Nightmare continues. Get some rest. Yeah, first of all, is all Anon says as he drifts off. Nightmare is staring at Anon as he rests. Why does it hurt so much? Her mind is in two places. She could beat him until he wakes up, force him back into his world. Something she would have done without second thought months before. However, she finds the second option better. To let him rest, and try to find her own beside him. He's still holding onto her. As she lays down, and with ease she didn't have before, her eyes fall heavy as she rests. She can't even pull off doing anything violent to him. Though I'm glad that's the case, considering there probably is going to be some violence coming soon. Anywho, let's get on to our non-violent donators. Top donators, Jesse Smith, Saw630, Battle Swap, the Only One Thing, Saru, Ryan, and Calidus. Matt Fact, Chuck, TF, Lucio, Darkside, Raiden, Noros, Black, Mirror, Pastel, Skies, Tossin, Rollins, Over, The Mortar, Dominic, and Larry, Runeside, Will, Chris, Twinkie, Rassel, Shadow, Moon, Luigi, Chancellor, Crest, Vix, Mo, Popcat, Murder, Princess, Jet, Little Mighty, Solar Symphony, and many more awesome people. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and love life to the fullest.